Okay, welcome to the forum for uh, mayor candidates here in Columbia Heights. Uh, uh, I'm Kathy Tinglestead. I'm a longtime member of the League of Women Voters, the ABC chapter, and I'm a resident of Coon Rapids. So um, I'm not, I am not able to vote in this race. So the forum tonight is being sponsored by the Anoka Blaine Coon Rapids Area League of Women Voters. And as you see in the audience, it's being taped by the North Metro TV so it can reach a broader audience um, online after tonight. Um, as far as the League of Women Voters, we do not support any political parties or candidates for office, but we strive to help citizens become informed voters and advocates for important issues that we've studied. If you're interested in the League of Women Voters, check out the website or information on the table. Um, it's open to women, men, and young people. Uh, the uh, website is www.lwvabcmn.org. So, and it's probably on your flyer that you received tonight. Okay, um, so this part of the forum is the two mayor candidates who won with the um, primary that was held in, in August and they will be on the ballot for November 6th. And as most people are probably aware, early voting is starting. So you can vote in person or through the mail now until November 5th, right before uh, the general election day. And so um, each of the questions are one minute. The candidates have agreed to the format. And so uh, with that, we'll get started here. We have uh, some opening questions and then we'll go to the audience questions. I see you have been submitting those, so thank you. And we'll try to group those according to topic. Um, we probably won't get to all of them, but we'll try to pick out the few that are representative of those. And uh, thankful to our two uh, volunteers here this evening from League of Women Voters helping with us, as well as our timekeeper this evening. Thank you. So, uh, we'll rotate the candidates as far as their answers, each one minute. And so the first question that they'll respond to is, describe your background and community involvement, and we'll start with Connie Biskins. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for, for coming to listen to the forum, and I thank the League of Women Voters for uh, putting this forum on and hosting it for us. Um, basically, I grew up in uh, Carver County in small towns, three different ones. My father was a builder, my mother a real estate agent. And after I graduated, I moved around from like LA and I lived in Minneapolis and then I lived in Seattle for 12 years. Um, and then the last 19 years, I've lived here with my husband in Columbia Heights. And I often call Columbia Heights my mini Seattle because it's so diverse, so much like Seattle, which I loved a lot about that city. I've worked in various fields. I've worked in the mortgage business. I've worked in education. In my early 20s, I worked in social services. And I uh, was semi-retired before I started getting involved in the city. And now I work for you. Um, I do a lot of volunteering in the city. I'm a member of Heights Next. Um, we do a lot of new events that we've brought to the city so we can bring different people all together to meet each other, build a stronger community. I also help take care of the flower pots in front of the city hall and immersion with the beautification committee that's been here for many decades. I have hobbies. I quilt. I'm an avid quilter and I have an urban farm. I take care of bees and I have a few chickens and lots of gardens. Thank you. Same question. Donna Schmidt. Thank you. I'm Donna Schmidt, Mayor of the City of Columbia Heights. Uh, first want to thank the League of Women Voters for this opportunity to be here tonight. I was raised in Hermantown, Minnesota. I graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree from University of Minnesota Duluth. My husband and I have been married for 41 years and raised our children in Columbia Heights. Uh, growing up, I learned from my parents the discipline, creativity, and frugality of being making do with what you had and I learned that you need to treat people with fairly and with respect allowing for a diversity of opinion and to listen to each other as mayor I maintain these standards um, I'm a member of Kiwanis uh, Kiwanis and Key Club have helped this city with recycling and selling mulch on Saturday mornings I'm on the multicultural advisory committee with the police department I tend and have spoken at monthly Christian and Muslim Dialogue with the Islamic Center of Minnesota. I represent the cities of Columbia Heights and Hilltop on the Mississippi Watershed Management Organization. I'm a master water steward and member of the Joint Law Enforcement Committee. 
Thank you. And the next opening question is, what are your qualifications for serving? This time we'll start with Donna Schmidt. Um, I am over 21 and have lived here for 33 years, so I do believe I meet the age and 30-day rule. I am a registered voter and I have not filed for another office. I first became interested in politics um, when I heard about the Library Commission and I was told it was impossible to get on there because no one ever left that commission. Um, I did get appointed to the Planning and Zoning Commission and served on that for nine years. I was elected to council in 2010 and again in 2014. In 2016, I was elected as mayor and served that term since 2017. I feel like I've only started to get to know my position as mayor and would love the opportunity to serve again. Um, but I do believe that these positions are not to be lifetime positions. Thank you. Same question. Connie Biskins. I'm currently on the council. I've been on the council for the last year and a half. I was previously on the planning commission for approximately two years. Um, my educational background is um, I have a bachelor's in social sciences and education. I also have a master's degree in educational psychology. Um, both those, my education in psychology is mostly research. I learned to analyze things and look at things from different perspectives. Um, I attended, um, let's see, volunteer. I'm heavily involved in the Heights Next and Beautification Committee, and I attend a lot of different events in the city, and I do so because it energizes me. It gets me excited about what's happening in our city and all the new things and the new people that are here. And the other thing is prior to um, uh, uh, running for council, I attended a lot of city council meetings and work sessions, so I learned a lot. Like this year is my fourth year going through the budget because I watched it for two, the first two years before I even got in the council. So I listened to people, I learned things and different ideas and bring them, try to bring them to the table if appropriate. And that's it. Okay. And the next question is, what are your short-term and long-term goals? And this time we'll start with Connie Biskins. Um, I think my short term and long term are the same. My main reason I'm running for um, mayor, one, I want us to focus on increasing our economic tax base. To me, that means buildings. Businesses, we can bring businesses in, but the businesses themselves, if they're going to rent or buy property that already exists, does not increase our taxes. What increases our taxes are buildings. We have the legends that just came in, that increases our taxes. When Hy-Vee comes in, and yes, they're coming, um, their building right now, they pay 174000 but in the future, with the improvements, that'll increase our tax base. We have three areas in our city right now that are ripe for redevelopment, 37th and Stinson, uh, 40th and Central, the old strip mall, 40th and University. There's a root property there that just needs to be cleaned up. If we can pull in, use uh, Hy-Vee as our anchor, to pull down new developers in to develop those three areas, we could probably bring in anywhere from about 300,000 to 600,000 in new taxes because of the buildings. And same question, Donna Schmidt. Um, two years ago, I was elected as mayor of, of the city and I had a chance to work with the staff more directly as the mayor. Um, our staff does a great job of encouraging new businesses to come to our city. I would like to see that continue. Um, when we lost the majority of our industrial area to housing at the Hewsett Park area, we became even more of a bedroom community and lost the potential for a larger tax base. We are a place where people live and eat, but when it comes to work, the majority of our people go elsewhere. We need to encourage, just like Connie has said, we need to encourage light industry and commercial to come back. We need to be prepared for the coming of hy V with the updating of nearby commercial property, making sure that when Global Academy leaves, that continues to be commercial. Um, the area between 37th and 40th on the west side of university, keep that light industrial and commercial area, making sure that that last part in Houston is as it's supposed to be a mixed use. Okay, and we have questions from the audience. The first one is, do you support the Columbia Heights School District re referendum? Why or why not? First up is Donna Schmidt. Um, as I said before, this is a great question to ask of a school board candidate, just as it's probably not appropriate for people to ask me who I voted for in other political offices. 
Uh, this is more appropriate for a school board candidate. Ask them how they can account for the $10 million that they asked for ten, four years ago. Ask how they are going to uh, fix the low test scores. Ask how they are accountable to the state for uh, their, um, their results that they have. Um, don't let anybody up here tell you who to vote for, what to vote for. You need to make that decision yourself. Whether it's a referendum, whether it is for a candidate, you need to make that decision. And same question, Connie Biskins. Um, as your council member and as your mayor, hopefully your future mayor, I'm not telling you who to vote for and how you do. I just ask you to get the information that you need to make a wise decision. Personally, I support the bond. I support education. The, the, the school, the elementary school, has not had any major renovations since the 1960s, and we're in the 21st century right now. I visited, I've toured all the buildings. Performing arts in the band rooms are dismal. We have, a, we right now, we cannot get a, um, disabled people onto the stage at the high school performing center. The inspector required that it be removed. So anyone that can't walk up the stairs cannot go on the stage. That includes children, that also includes the alumni. The performing arts and the band room both play an important role. Much research has been done on this in improving math skills and social studies and other topics. It's a very important part of education. And I think the environment that's re that you need in a learning environment is just as much as important as the subjects that are taught. When kids feel valued, when the rooms are clean, when they can go to the library and hang out and read. If you, I, I encourage everyone to go tour that building. The library is in a basement and basement room that's cinder block. The kids can only be in there in 10 minutes because of the fumes. I'll stop. Okay, I'll finish. They can only be in there with the fume because of fumes that come from the cinder block. They cannot hang out, relax, and read books. Thank you. Okay, this next question was also asked to the city council candidates. It's, do you support a two-year or a four-year term for mayor, and why? First up is Connie Biskins. I support a four-year term. And the reason I do are many reasons. One, um, Donna, like when you just get into the office for the first year, then you're spending the next year campaigning. You don't get a chance to, to get into your position and actually work on the things that you ran for when you got into office. Two, as a person who's run two campaigns now in the last two years, it can be expensive. And for people who are unknown or not as well known as Bruce Narwaki, who was mayor for 46 years and on the council, council and mayor for 46 years, or Gary Peterson, who was on the council for 30 years, you have to get your name out there and people need to get to know you. It's time consuming and it's costly. And I, I think a four year term brings us to the 21st century um, because most cities have four year terms. And finally, the main reason is that holding um, mayors accountable, the only way you can do is vote and you may have to wait 18 months to get them um, elected. Did I just cover one question or did I cover both? Yes, yeah, there was one. only one okay, question. Thank you. I just, okay. the last one. I just want to make sure I didn't miss the other part. <laughs> Sorry. So same question. Do you support a two year or a four year term for mayor uh, Donna Schmidt? Um, when I first ran, I was actually leaning towards a four-year term, but as uh, I've come into this position and realize that two years is sufficient, it is. It does mean I tend to. Uh, you threw out the name Bruce Naraki. Bruce Naraki supported a two-year term, and his feeling was because then every two years you can change who is on the council. Uh, all three, you could change three members, whether it's two, two council members or the mayor, that if you had a four-year term as a mayor, there's always that extended period where you can't. Um, as a, as a two-year term, you, yes, it is expensive initially when you get started, but if you're running again, you can reuse those same campaign signs. It's okay, people understand. Uh, there are several times that it's, it, it, it is okay to go ahead and, and do that. But every time you look at it, you are accountable. And uh, as mayor, whether it's a two to your term or four year term, that's up to you voters. You make that decision. Okay, this next question, uh, Donna Schmidt will be the first to answer and um, it's about neighborhoods and nuisance properties. So how will you help this city deal with nuisance properties? First up, Donna Schmidt. Um, as nuisance properties, we do we do have occasion when people do call and tell us that 
they having an issue with their neighbor? S depending on what the nuisance is, we will contact the, either the police or the fire and an, send an inspector out, or it could be a building official. So we do have three different departments that could potentially look at those nuisance properties. We also want to make sure that people realize if it is a personal property, it is a little bit harder to deal with than it is if it's a rental. Rentals, you deal with a landlord. Um, if it's a private owner, you have to deal with that individual. So it does take longer to get a, a situation corrected. We need to hear both sides. So we need to hear the, the property owner's side. We also need to hear the neighbor's side. Just because a neighbor's call doesn't mean it's necessarily bad. We have to hear all sides, and that's why we get everybody involved. Same question, Connie Biskins. Um, I got the numbers yesterday. The, the fire department is responsible for doing the inspections of both um, of the rental properties and commercial properties and a ton of miscellaneous. And as of September 11th, they have gone out and, on over 2,500 calls for inspections. So there, um, along with that, the fire department has also seen a large, significant increase in medical calls. And partly that's due because doctors and, and uh, office clinics that people call are becoming more risk adverse. And they're asking them to call 911, which means our fire department goes out there, our police go out there, and then the ambulance goes out there, depending on what's going on. So they're starting to be stretched thin. Um, they're doing the best job they can. I did a ride along. We did about 12, 15 inspections or re-inspections. They run around, they don't run around, drive around town and check everything out as best they can. But they, because of time constraints, it's difficult. So we are working, the council itself, we got a study coming up from a consultant to see how our public safety building can be improved. So we are definitely focusing on that, um, whether we split it into a separate inspection department or keep it as is, we're not sure yet. We're still talking about it. <laughs> okay, the next question, Connie Biskins will be up first, relates to economic development. How do we grow and improve our community? Uh, so many different ways we can do this, and this is so exciting, because when I came on the council, I had a list of 60 things to do. <laughs> a lot of them went to the wayside, but a few of them stuck, and one of them was asking if we could possibly do a grant program for our small businesses to improve their facades. I went to our city manager, and I had it on my list of five things, and fortunately for me, and for the city, they, the staff and the, and the city manager liked it. Then it went to the Economic Development Committee and they discussed it and they passed it. Then it went to the council and they discussed it and they passed it. I put it on the agenda but everyone else did the work. The staff did the work and they did far more than, it, than I expected. And so now we have eight businesses that are gonna add some dazzle to our Central Avenue. I'm so excited between new lighting, new facades, new signage, and we'll hopefully have this program for the next five years. It's also brought new interest from other businesses from other cities that are calling to see if I move there, will you guys do it for me? And the businesses themselves, have, in addition to the money that we're matching in our grant fund, um, they are increased, they've added $50,000 worth of development on top of what our grant program provided, and I'm super excited. Same question, Donna Schmidt. Could you repeat the question again? Sure, related to economic development. How do we grow and improve our community? Thank you. Um, as, as a city and as city staff, we have great staff. Uh, we have staff that has actively uh, gone out to businesses when they see their name in an article in the paper saying they're afraid to be in Minneapolis because of certain situations happening there and they looking for a new place to come to and uh, before I can even call them I I call them contact them and they said oh we've already contacted them so we have great staff that's very proactive not waiting for necessarily for the council to okay something, but they're actively going out and, and going out and seeking new people to move to our city. But not just that, we, we are keeping aware of whatever is going on around us too. We have, um, it wasn't just Connie, but it was the whole council and the EDA that approved that um, development grant that was approved for Central Avenue. It was something that had been talked about for a couple years actually. So it's everything that is done is done with a result of a, the whole council and the whole EDA. Okay, the next question from the audience relates to the new city hall. Um, Donna Schmidt will answer it first. 
Um, they're basically wondering about building a new city hall. Would you support this? Where would it go? How would you pay for it? And then they referenced uh, that evidently recently Columbia Heights has borrowed to pay for two municipal liquor stores, a public safety building, and a new public library. So related to New City Hall, give us your thoughts. Actually, um, the library was the most recent one and actually it was voted on by the, the residents here to prove that uh, bonding. So that was one thing that we decided on as a city to go ahead and build a new library. As far as the City Hall, we have several options on the table. Not one of them has been decided on yet. There still is a possibility of building above the public safety building that was built to hold a second, possibly even a third floor. That is one option. The another option is to expand our city hall and, and connect it to Mersion Hall. That is another second option that's being discussed. All of this is in future discussion. Nothing has been decided and Remember how many years it took for the library to be built. You can plan that it will take a few more years for City Hall to be built at this point. Same question, Connie Biscuits. Can you repeat the question? Sure. A new City Hall, um, do you support this? Where would it go? How would you pay for it? And then it references uh, recently uh, done buildings through the city, the uh, liquor stores, public safety building, and new library. Um, yes, I support a new city hall. It's been under discussion. We have a city hall right now that parts of it are 100 years old. Um, in fact, a few years ago before they fixed the boiler room downstairs, um, they had major flooding where our staff, if they needed to go down into storage, uh, Shelly would have to take off her nylons and roll up her skirt to get down there because the water was six, about up to knee deep just to get documents from planning community. Um, we have discussed it, we are discussing it, we did a master plan. Right now, at least a few of us are looking at the space across the street because we own it and attaching it to Mersion Hall. Um, we have saved approximately $6 million from our LGA fund over the last few years. So we do have the majority would be paid for from that savings account, plus maybe a small bond that goes with it depending on the, um, so, you know the size of the building right now we have a 39,000 square foot building it's inefficient there's a lot of issues with it we have eight thousand dollars worth of repairs to do on it building a more efficient building that can last us 50 to 100 years i think would be a great investment for our city okay uh, related to infrastructure uh, how would you finance local road projects and what do you think of the city's relations should be with the state department of transportation First one is Connie Viskins. Um, MnDOT, a lot of times, like for now, from 43rd to 47th, we are have applied for two grants. I believe one for sure is from MnDOT. We applied last year for a grant and were denied to fix the sidewalks and the lighting and do some things to make it safer for people to walk across the street when Hy-Vee comes in, and yes, they are coming. Um, and this year, <laughs> this year, <laughs> it's a question I get asked all the time. Um, this year, we've applied for two grants to help pay for those um, improvements and we're waiting till December. The staff is very proactive in grant money. The things that I see, I sent along to them, they already know about it. They're working very hard. Relationship with MnDOT, we let the staff work with MnDOT. There's been times when I've wanted to talk to MnDOT and they've asked me please not to because they want to keep a good relationship with them because I have trouble with the lights, the two minute lights that go east-west on Central and uh, some other issues that come up. But they do a great job. They have a great relationship with them and they're working with them as best they can. Same question, Donna Schmidt. Okay, can you repeat it again, please? Sure, local roads. So how would you finance local road projects and what do you think the city's relations should be with uh, MnDOT? Um, our local road projects, there's, they're funded several ways. One of them is through taxes. Uh, they're also funded through, through um, assessments from uh, residents or businesses, uh, private organizations. Uh, we have, currently we have a alley construction that we are looking at. All of our roads are on a, on a rotating plan for every, every few years we do one section of the city. Our alleys have not been put on that situ situation and our alleys have several, several alleys have re deteriorated quite a, a bunch, a, month, a, a large amount. So we're working on that. MnDOT, we have to work with MnDOT, it, be it good or be it bad. Uh, 
like Connie said, we have we have several grants that we've gotten through them and several we've been denied. So we do our best to do what we can with what we have our money for. Uh, Kevin is very good at not going out and doing something that we don't have money for. So he is very, very good at that. Thank you. And so the last question from the audience before we go into the closing remarks is uh, uh, for uh, Donna Schmidt as the first uh, response. Uh, the question is, what do you see as Columbia Heights' greatest strength and how will you build on that? Donna Schmidt. One of our greatest strengths that we have is that we are a small community uh, of 20,000 people. And I think of that and I, in comparison to our neighbors just south of us, Minneapolis, where everything is divided into wards and it's hard for people to get to know their neighbors. Uh, we, have, we have areas where we have smaller lots, we have some areas where we have larger lots. So you have lots of choices in this city. It's not just everybody is down to a little 60 square foot lot, but some of us have lots that may even have an alley, some don't. There, we have lots of choices. We have great parks. The city has has been known for its parks. And if you look across the street during the daytime, you'll see Hewsett Park is very active from the seniors to the, to the youth that come by there. This is a family community, family oriented, and that is our biggest strength. And same question, Connie Biskins. I think our greatest strength, and I'll do with some of the people from city council, are the people in this city. I love going out door knocking because I get to meet more and more new people, and I'm really amazed at how eclectic and diverse our, our people are in this community, I think, is strength. The other, adding on to that, is we've had over a 60% turnover in population in this city, so a lot of new people are coming in. And I can't get over it, and I keep saying it, we have lots of new babies in town. And those young families are bringing in a whole new energy that we can build on to create a very vibrant city, a city that people want to come in, that they're fighting over the houses to move into. Um, and lots of things happening with development, with high V and redevelopment that we're hoping to do in the future. That's what I want to build. I want those new families to stay. I want the people that grew up here and, and are retiring here. I want them to stay. Um, it's again, the people. I, I really enjoy talking to the people and working with folks and volunteering and serving you as the city council. And I'd love to serve you as mayor. Thank you. Okay, going into the closing remarks, first up is Connie Biskins. I kind of did my closing remark on the last one, sorry. You get another minute. Um, again, I, I am very excited about this city. I have a lot of passion for the things that are happening and the new people that are moving in, and yet I still love talking to the seniors that have lived here for 60 years. I've met a 95-year-old guy a few weeks ago, and I learned more history and about the people and, and all the different things that are going on. So I would love to be your mayor. I'd love to serve again with you and uh, make our city a dynamite city when folks that are fighting over to move into. Thank you. Closing remarks, Donna Schmidt. Thank you. Uh, Columbia Heights continues to be a great city where neighbors help neighbors. Just this past weekend, volunteers came together, planted 60 trees over at Keys Park, and did a wonderful job. I just got a note back from one of the sponsors saying thank you for uh, your support. Um, when families do a fundraiser for uh, in certain events, community members are there helping out. Uh, when soldiers are deployed, neighbors help those left behind. We still have stay-at-home grandmas on the blocks that watch to make sure our kids are getting home safe to their homes from the bus stop. Um, collectively, these individuals do those things because they believe in our community and because they know it is the right thing to do. Um, as mayor, I will continue to be available to you, the taxpayers. I will continue to work proactively with county, state, and federal authorities and officials as we move forward together and achieve what is best for the Columbia Heights. Thank you. And before we thank the uh, candidates, just a few wrap-up comments here. Um, we do want to thank you for your willingness to serve and to speak tonight and run for public office. Uh, thanks also to the League of Women Voters and a big thank you to the North Metro TV for taping and special thanks to the audience for your great questions and 
for your attention to detail this evening. Um, if you're interested in League of Women Voters, visit the website at lwvabcmn.org. Um, if you want more information about voting, either early in person or via mail or on Election Day, which is November 6th, the best website to go to is through the Secretary of State's office, mnvotes.org, minvotes.org. And uh, so with that, on behalf of the League of Women Voters in Oka Blaine, Coon Rapids area, uh, thank you and good night.